Isn't it funny how so many disparate things can simultaneously line up in such a fashion that you see a narrative begin to form? That's how I feel about last year. I don't think anybody went into 2023 expecting it to be the tragic end of an era that it turned out to be. In fact, if you were like me, you actually thought you were entering the start of a brand new and exciting chapter in your life that would lead to a bigger and brighter future, only for you to unexpectedly fall off the rails as you hit the end of the road on a journey you started a long time ago and then realize how apt that it was that it happened considering all the other stuff that ended that year too. Which is why I felt so compelled to make an entry for this last Nando one scene collaboration. Because for those of you who only know me from my time on here, I've actually been participating in these since the very start of my YouTube career. As a matter of fact, my one marvelous scene video that I made, I don't know how long ago because YouTube deleted my old channel after it got hacked, was one of the first things I ever made that really popped off and got me noticed, specifically for this fan art here. And so as I reach the end of this part of my YouTube journey, I feel it only appropriate that I bid it farewell by examining one last scene. Michael's closing argument for humanity. But first, I need to give y'all some much needed context. You could even call it a confession, really, since what I'm about to tell you is considered a corporal sin amongst creative individuals. That being, I didn't start making videos for fun. Don't get me wrong, I have a lot of fun making them and I'm really passionate about the things I create, but this was never my hobby. It was my career. My intention with this endeavor had always been to grow to the point where it became self-sustaining so that way I could ultimately use it to build an audience that I could then leverage to work on even bigger projects with prospectively higher financial returns. I entered the entertainment industry with the end goal that in five years time I would have created something that would have lifted my family out of poverty, that would have allowed me to get my mom out of work because I thought that's what I was good at. And for all accounts, I failed. I dropped out of school to get ahead of everyone else by fucking miles to be my own boss where I was dedicating the majority of my hours to working on projects I was passionate about and yet despite my best efforts and mild successes I found myself stuck working to death at a shitty dead end job that I absolutely hated more broke than ever as I watched my former classmates graduate from prestigious colleges. Combine that with the growing success of my younger contemporaries who were all objectively better than me. So... Like, not envious, just like, damn, I thought I was good. I am not. <laughs> but suddenly, these things that I had always prided myself on, my intelligence, my ambition, my tenacity, my creativity, the pillars of my self-esteem began to crumble. And when the dust settled, there was only one pillar left, my interpersonal relationships. And really... It was one interpersonal relationship that was keeping this whole thing afloat. It was the one that I had invested the most amount of time and energy and love into. The one that meant the most to me. But the thing about that is, despite being deeply self-introspective and pretty progressively minded and, you know, gender non-conforming, I still have toxic Latino masculinity baked into my soul, which means despite knowing I had several issues I really needed to work through, I neglected my mental health for years because I'm a workaholic and a champion at compartmentalizing. Holy shit, I got that right. However, in turn, these years of neglect had caused all my worst traits to slowly metastasize to the point that I had become this chaotic, Deeply insecure, incredibly paranoid, obsessive, self-destructive, self-loathing mess that ultimately ended up hurting this person that I cared so much about, that meant the world to me. I was hurting them. I was hurting them a lot. That, that wasn't easy to process. But... It was after that realization that I had finally resolved to start doing the hard work and focus on improving myself. I would quit my shitty 9 to 5, get a therapist, enroll back into school, start making videos for fun, and re-enter the workforce after some proper R&R, &R, but this time trying to do something I actually remotely liked. And well, 
Six months later, I'm broke as shit. I'm unemployed and desperately looking for work. Still haven't gone back to school. Worked on a whole bunch of videos that I never finished or I did and just never released because I don't think they're good enough and have yet to start therapy. Granted, though, getting therapy is surprisingly very difficult, especially if you'd like a therapist who is affordable and someone you actually feel comfortable with. But not so with today's video sponsor, BetterHelp. With BetterHelp, finding a therapist that suits you is easier than ever. <laughs> No, could you fucking imagine? I mean, I'd try it if I wasn't as stated already broke shit. But when I'm alone, and I'm not trying to put up a farce about how utterly disappointed I am in myself, and I think about how despite trying to improve and having the full desire and intention to do so, I am exactly where I was six months ago. And those feelings come back. Those feelings about how I'm a pathetic waste of space, how I'll never get better, and how I don't even deserve to get better because I'm a terrible person, and everyone in my life who cares about me would be better off if I just off myself instead of being such a goddamn burdensome piece of shit. They think about this. I spent a year being an absolute diaper load of a human being, and the points total tells you that. But what that number can't tell you is who he could have become tomorrow. What you just watched is, in my opinion, the penultimate scene from a show called The Good Place, which if you haven't seen, uh, I highly recommend you watch it. I slept on it for a long time. And if I had, you know, seen it when it was airing and I was a teenager having an existential crisis, uh, I low-key might have been more well-adjusted by now. <laughs> But the basic gist, with as few spoilers as possible, is that Eleanor, a bad person, accidentally ends up in the good place. And in an attempt to stay there and not be sent to the bad place, embark on a journey of self-improvement that ends up spanning time and space and heaven and hell and ultimately leads to the whole concept of how a human soul is judged after death and what determines they be damned for all eternity or not comes into question. And after nearly four seasons of examining a bunch of different philosophical concepts and cheaty writing Kant like there's no tomorrow, this is the show's conclusion. And it's one of the most beautiful and poignant pieces of art I've ever seen. Which is funny because, you know, the scene in itself isn't particularly spectacular. The camera work, the lighting, the comp is all pretty standard network TV. The music is serviceable. The writing is honestly just kind of okay. Like, what Michael says is not a particularly iconic or profound monologue. And yet, it stuck with me, which is pretty rare. Despite loving filmmaking and storytelling and TV as much as I do, it's not very often that a scene will hit me so hard and touch my soul so deeply that I am left thinking about it well after experiencing it for the first time. A lot of credit truly goes to how the show is written from a structural standpoint, I'll say, but also Ted Danson's performance. He delivers those lines with such sincerity that it radiates this warmth that reaches beyond the screen and, you know, almost provides me with genuine comfort. It's like, it's like if somebody actually were talking to me. Which sounds super cheesy, but it's the truth. Every time I feel myself spiraling and falling deeper and deeper into negative thoughts and feelings about how I failed everybody that I love and care about, how much I hate myself for allowing myself to become this absolute mess and just diaper load of a human being, I think about this scene and it lifts me up from that despair. Because yeah, maybe today I'm not where I wanted to be. Maybe in some ways, I'm worse than where I was, but none of that matters because none of that is a determination of who I'm going to be tomorrow if I just keep trying. There's another great Michael scene that I think pairs very nicely with this one and hammers this point home even further. What matters isn't if people are good or bad. What matters is if they're trying to be better today than they were yesterday. You ask me where my hope comes from? That's your answer. When I was a teenager and still studying with my Bible teacher, I remember asking him over and over, how do I know I'm good enough for God? Because in my existentially damaged adolescent mind, that's all that mattered. And he'd always tell me to stop worrying so much about the end goal, about whether or not I was good enough, 
and just focus on being a little bit better today than you were yesterday. And it wasn't until a little over a month ago, almost a decade later and years after I stopped studying the Bible and low-key believing in God that I've finally taken his advice to heart. Active self-improvement is really fucking hard. But whenever I feel like giving up, I think about all the different people who care about me, who love me, who have loved me, and how I owe it not just to myself, but to them to keep trying to be better. Because if I just keep trying, eventually, I will become a better version of myself. And they deserve to experience that. And this, this video, is my attempt to be a little bit better than I was yesterday. For the longest time, my career has made me miserable. A lot of that has to do with how much my work is tied to my self-worth, my pride, my ego, my deep desire for external validation and praise, to have my name attached to something that other people consider great. And so instead of allowing my career to continue to make me miserable in the hopes that when it takes off, I'll be able to use it to repair all my damaged self-worth, I'm letting it go. Not just my active pursuit of a career, but my name. Because I still want to make things. I love making things. But I can't allow any success I find or don't find in doing that to impact me any further. So hi, you can call me Lalo. This video is honestly uh, kind of mid. You might even say it's bad. And that's okay. The next one will be better. Hopefully. I can only try my best.